What is up, lads? And welcome back to the Pez Universe podcast. My name, of course, is the Midnight Kid. And uh, we've got a familiar face on the bottom of me today. He's back. He's back, ladies and gentlemen. He told me before the show we had to hype his return up. So, Wes, he's back. The main man, guy that this show can't do without, you know, whatever it is, whatever you want to say. That's not true. That's certainly not true. <laughs> uh, that, I'll tell you what, all I will say is rumours of my demise were greatly exaggerated. <laughs> One, the podcast one had to be put mentioned. on hold. That was the, the it was in the contract me and Wes yeah, had that if, if Wes can't come on, well, I can't go on. So basically, I it's, was allowed to do one show without him, and that's that's my limit. Yeah, but um, I, I, had the, uh, I had the case of the Dennis Burr camps of not being able to get on a plane. <laughs> that, that was it. I was like, can't travel, can't do this anymore. Yeah, man, but it's it's good to have you back, and uh, we are joined by. The beast that is Marlon Anthony. I mean, he's up to my left here. He's looking very slick, and uh, we didn't get the mo because uh, we're just wearing a couple yeah, of uh, a couple of little t-shirts. But Marlon is looking slick there. Um, obviously, you guys will know him from his YouTube videos. His his videos at the moment have been. I was just saying to him even before I asked him to come on the show. His videos have been so good lately. He's taken you know retrospective look backs at the series and. I don't know. I mean, if you've kind of grown disinterested with the series, I think it's a good place to go back and get a, get kind of like that Pez feeling back because it is it is a bit absent at the moment. You know, it has moved on to eFootball. So, yeah, Marlon, welcome in, man. It's been a while. I think we were saying before the show, it's been nearly two years, I'd say, since you've been on. Um, Yeah, it has. And it's a real pleasure to join you guys. I've been um, enjoying the ones that you've been putting up for this one. Um, Fantasize long and hard about coming on one myself and here we are yeah man all lived up and ready to go it's our pleasure we're uh, looking forward to getting your thoughts on it because a lot of people have been asking me to get you on um just to kind of see your thoughts and obviously with the way football is we've a lot to unpack i mean wes is 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 obviously going to have a lot to say as well and i think we've had I, i've enjoyed the break i mean it's been a three-week break since we had the last episode so i think it's been a good kind of a good time to sit back and think to ourselves you know what what about this direction that they're going in you know is there some positives now that we're seeing with the new update what do we make of the delay so i mean there's a lot to there's a lot to unpack um and we are going to just jump straight right right in as we do on this podcast no messing about um we're going to talk about the the, the delay i suppose and, and start with you marlon even though i know wes is chomping at the bit <laughs> Um, we are going to start with our guest today, Marlon. Um, what do you, what do you make of the delay now, man? I mean, it's, it's just, they've come out and they finally come out and said, look, you know, we were saying it's going to be next month and it was going to be two weeks delayed and three weeks delay. And then we had all these magical kind of release dates of what patch would be coming out, what version of the game would be out. And now they've said, look, it won't be out till at least, you know, spring 2022, which could be as early as March or as late as May. So now that we know that, like, what are your thoughts on that, man, now that we actually know that that's, you know, concrete uh, information? It's a shame because it just comes off as scatterbrain from what you want to expect from a um, a mainstream company. Um, obviously, the first thought is, is disorganized. Mm. Um, I mean, in the press release, they stated that they wanted to take some longer time to develop it. Um, and then you kind of ask yourself, well, what was happening in the 24 months since um, PES 2020? You know, we skipped a year to release 2021 and um, we got very excited and, you know, we anticipated um, this experience with eFootball 2022. Mm. So if you need more time, then what was happening in that time between that? I think that's uh, the first question a lot of people want to ask. Um, and I think, secondly, had they had just maybe been honest from the very beginning and said, um, we're having difficulty making this, we're trying something new, it's not finished, but we're going to let you guys have a taster, let us know what you think. I think had they had said that to begin with, then this damage could have been handled a lot better. Mm. Whereas yeah. now it seems like you've kind of um, made a knee-jerk reaction to the negative feedback that's come out and you've pulled back and then you've said, well, we need more time to work on it. So it's like, if you need more time, then why did you release it in the state that it is? That's mm. pretty obvious to everyone else. Yeah. I mean, do you, think the, do you think the game was ever going to be ready for when they said that it was going to be ready? Or do you think just based on what came out on September 30th that it just wasn't ready? Like, do you think that it was... They always kind of knew themselves, do you think? Or do you think they just lost the run of themselves a bit? 
yeah definitely i don't think i don't think the developers or um the publishers or anybody else involved in this whole process is daft i think they knew full well um that it wasn't ready i don't think anybody could make something like this and say they're 100 percent happy or proud of it and who knows because None of us are there. None of us know exactly what conversations have happened mm. for it to come out in this state. But something has um, caused someone to give the go-ahead for this to come out in the way that it did. They know exactly um, what's going on and what state this is in. And in some ways, I do feel bad. I do feel bad for the people that have... They can't defend themselves, that have made this game. They can't defend themselves and come out and say, well, I had nothing to do with that, with that part, or... You know, if it was up to me, it would have been better. If it was up to me, it would have come out later. Mm. Those people can't say their piece because that's just the bureaucracy of it all. But ultimately, yeah. here they are, and everyone's throwing dirt at them, and they have to take it. And the company has to take that, mm. hence the press release. But they're capable of making press releases saying, you know, capable of making press releases apologizing. So why couldn't they be capable of making a press release saying what I said earlier? But Guys, we know it's not um, completely ready. We don't normally do this, but we want to give you a taste of it. We want to do an early access mm. or say from the start that it is a demo. They said it was a full game and then they rescinded that and said it was mm. a demo. Yeah. So that's what's quite surprising. There's not many companies that do that kind of thing. Mm. Usually it's the other way around. Usually it is, here's a beta, here's a test. Full game's coming later. Mm. This time it's the other way around. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> Knocked my camera off there. <laughs> <laughs> Such was the animation. In yeah, his, such uh, was the passion he's getting into. He just God knocks the camera out. Can you still hear me? Yeah, we yeah, can hear you, man. You're good. You're good. Oh, what the hell happened? You're there? good. You're good. Probably just disconnected, maybe. The wire, maybe. Yeah, you're back now, I think. Oh, yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, you're good, man. You're good. I don't know how I've done that. Do you want to do a sync clap or do you want to just go? No, we're good. We're good. We're going to leave that in. <laughs> no, this is, the, this is the podcast with, uh, you know, the super professional levels. We do know it. We don't do it. Yeah, yeah. It's just whatever happens, happens, you know? But um, yeah, I mean, Wes, like, there's a lot to unpack. And I mean, Marilyn is touching on everything that I think now that we've had time to to sink back into our chairs and, and really process what's happening, that we don't have, you know, a fully fledged Pez game or eFootball game this, this side of Christmas, really. You know, we're not going to have a new game this year that we can sit down and play um, like until the game actually comes out like mid next year or whenever it does come out. But I do think that a lot of the anger has, I won't say subsided, but I think a lot of acceptance has crept into people that are like, yeah, look, it's not coming now. I don't have the option of waiting a month. I need to go and find a different game or I need to watch more TV or I need to take, take up another hobby that Pez used to, used to take up my time with. Um, I mean, how do you feel about it? I mean, since, since we last spoke, I know you've been very... Ang not angry, I, I think it's too strong of a word. I think you've been disappointed because you did take that step away last year, hoping to come back guns blazing this year. Like, how are you feeling now after the, uh, since we last spoke? Yeah, I think from, from, from what, it, from Mar what Marlon said there, I think, yeah, there is a general vibe of just, it is kind of just, oh, okay, well, it's happened now. Like it's, mm. we, we, we deliberately hold off these podcasts. I know we've made a point of this in previous podcasts. We deliberately hold off recording these because we don't want the emotional hot take of yeah. x y and z comes out and then you find out maybe after the fact of a week or two later that you know that you know you have actually rationale behind it i think the disappointing part of this is a little bit to what, what kind of Marlon said is that you know it, it's it's all well and good doing press releases it's all well and good doing questionnaires but this is the same old same old it's the same old thing it's the same old mentality it's the same old method of delivering a game except this time it's now in you know live service form mm. you know um it's kind of like what it feels like at the moment from from my perspective when i heard that the delay was there not to mention the fact that the delay would you know i expected oh, okay well maybe you know it'd be christmas like i thought oh do you know what? if there's gonna be something there that might go oh do you know what it probably just needs a couple of weeks yeah not that's what we told with my club wasn't it yeah, because that that was what I was thinking. Because I saw, oh, okay, November eighteenth. I thought, oh, okay, well, you know, they're not going to change the date from then. Surely not. Mm. And then actually, not only have they changed it a month, they've gone then some into next year. Which mm. for me, the sense, the sense, and the the vibe that I get is is that this thing is out of control. 
Mm. It's not within the realms of Konami where they can rein this thing back in because, you know, as much as we as PES fans or as eFootball fans, as it were, as much as we sit there going, do you know what, we're okay, we'll wait until it's here, quite rightly, how are we waiting two years mm. or two yeah. over now two years for a game that they took a break from to make? Mm. And, you know, as much as, you know, as there has been anger and there has been, do you know what, when is this coming? I think the key point here is, again, from my stance, is, is that it's directly linked to this whole we're going to try and link the mobile game to be mm. cross-platform. Yeah, with I think the, so, yeah. yeah. We've never had it before in the, the iterations of the series. Granted, it, it wasn't even asked for by by people who mm. were, were you know, who were you know, probably being surveyed. I don't think anybody was sitting there going, do you know what, if I buy a PS5, I'd love to play some on a mobile. Mm. I don't think anybody was sat there. People, when they talk about cross-play when it was before, it was... Do you know what? The Xbox community is so small, let's get them some more games. Yeah. So it's Xbox and PlayStation or Xbox, PlayStation, PC. Not Xbox, PlayStation, Stadia, Sega, Saturn, <laughs> Mobile. Do you know what I mean? Like it, was, yeah. it wasn't what, what was asked for. And the key, and again, another key point I think that's there is, is the reason why that focus was there is, oh, well, they're, they're going to try and make it so you get loads of games. The problem with that is, is that if your hype has died before the game has come out, it doesn't matter how many mm. consoles and yeah. how many platforms you put it on, the game, the matchmaking is going to take forever because mm. you're not going to have interested people playing that game. So, again, the, the the level of disappointment is even more so than when I realised that it wasn't what I saw in the teaser trailer. Mm. It's even more disappointing than when I thought, you know what, I'll take a year out, I'll go and play FIFA, and I'll go and, ta- and, I'll go and wait for this game to come out. It, it's disappointment mm. um, and yeah sure i will still try it in in march or june or whatever the you know whatever it is in 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 the spring or whenever it decides to come out because ultimately it's 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 a free game which is kind of the road that we we said that it was going to go down yeah but i mean is it going to be the game that i'm going to pick up in in between march and june when i've got a fully fledged game sat here in fifa 22 I've got a fully fledged management simulator in Football Manager. Mm. You know, we talked at length about how Cyberpunk and uh, No Man's Sky made these types of releases, you know, almost the norm. Mm. We've just seen what happened with the GTA trilogy. Yeah, that's true. And it's, it's, it's now it's now becoming the norm within gaming. Mm. And and this isn't this isn't the way that this is meant to go because again, these games, much like GTA, Pez holds a particular you know, uh, kind of nostalgia with mm. its community. Yeah. The same yeah. way that those GTA games do, you know? And I think that that's, that's what is kind of being almost taken advantage of here, is mm. that it's the, well, do you know what? These people will wait. They'll wait regardless because they're PES fans. It's not the way it is. It's mm. never, it's, it's not, it certainly isn't this year mm. because, again, I think people, like you said, it, you know, and as we've said before, it's trial by social media. Soon as that thing become a meme, as soon as you saw Ronaldo gurning and Messi's chin that wasn't there, mm. and you know invisible players and you know the you know people coming out with no heads, that's it. It's done. Mm. It's a wrap <laughs> because then people have made, memed it half to death, and then that's it. So I I don't know how they recover from this. I, it just the sense for me is is that this thing is now out of control. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I do think quickly. To, sorry, just to touch on yeah. that last point. I think the other thing is that. Um, what I don't understand is you mentioned Cyberpunk, you mentioned No Man's Sky. Um, there's other games in the past that have done the same thing, like um, the Aliens game. I can't remember which one it was. Oh, yeah. The whole AI. Isolation, was it? Were they, were no, they, it wasn't yeah. Isolation. It was um, Combat Something. That's it. Yeah, Colonial. Colonial Marines. Yeah, That's it was it. the one where you had the aliens running at the wall because the AI <laughs> yeah. was just ridiculous. Yeah. So, so on and so forth. Duke Nukem, uh, Duke Nukem yeah. Forever. Like, it's, it, there, there are games out there where it seems to be that profit is the overriding factor in why it releases when it does, not necessarily the quality of the game. I've always said this on live streams that if games company games companies make their decisions for the benefit of the of the games company, the only games companies that tend to get good press is when their gaming and business decisions somehow accidentally benefit the communities. Mm. Yeah, yeah, well, and, and, yeah and that, I mean. That tends to be that tends to be the companies who get away with it, which is why I think maybe Rockstar thought they were going to get away with it with the trilogy, and they mm. haven't. You know, well, the only thing I don't understand. 
Sorry, the only thing that I don't understand is that we now have history as a reference point to show us what happens when you release something that isn't finished mm -hmm. and people aren't daft anymore. You know, we now have social media where people aren't afraid to say what they see and to be honest about how unhappy they are with something. And once something basically builds momentum and the internet weaves its web, um, the damage is pretty much um, irreparable. Once they turn around and say, look how bad this game is, look how shocking it is, look at the glitches, then it basically spins its own, spins its own record. Mm. Yeah. And you kind of can't get, back, get that back. And as a company, and you mentioned that a company, even if they solely wanted to make money, they still need the good press and the good reception to make that money. So if that's what, even if that's what all you cared about as a company, you're still overseeing the most important thing, which is that initial impression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you release something yeah, that agree. is just doomed to leave that bad impression, you kind of can't get it back. It's going and to take years, I think, yeah. yeah. It's the same with PES 14. We're right back to where we were with that, is that, like, you know, PES 14, people that maybe have never played PES or never played PES 15, 16, or onwards, like, they just, when they're in an argument with somebody, let's say that they're, you know, a FIFA player for argument's sake, it's the first thing, it's the first line of defense you put up, you know, maybe a face from PES 14, you know, like Kyle Walker or Marcelo who had like shocking faces at launch in yeah. PES 14. And again, they were, you know, they were memes when memes weren't really a thing on, on, on Twitter and stuff. So yeah, I think that you're going to see, you know, th those kind of memes for eFootball floating around with the invisible heads for years to come. Yeah. Um, I think myself personally, I think we had a podcast a couple, a couple of months ago now where we spoke about the, the Windsor build and what I played over in, over in Windsor. And I kind of said to Wes, you know, and I think a lot of people, I still get asked a load of questions about it on Twitter, even though we've done about maybe three hours of conversation in the, in the podcast about it. And I think it does throw up a lot of questions as to like why it, I think, I think it actually like answers more answers a few questions as well as throwing up a lot of questions. Whereas like, I think now we definitely kind of have seen in the Windsor bill, like a more advanced version that I don't know for a fact, but I, I, if I was, you know, kind of using my logic, I would say it was a PS5 only type of experience, say, or it was like maxed out to show the potential of it, like down the line or what was eventually going to be coming down the line. Um, you know, because I thought with last month's update or this month's update or a few weeks ago, whenever it was, I thought they did have the sharp kick in. I thought they did have certain features because it's like, okay, well, they're already implemented in some build. Like, why not put them in and, you know, it would change the pace of the game for, you know, or change the variety of shooting, which has been a huge uh, complaint from people that are like, yeah, you know, scoring isn't fun. Like, it doesn't feel rewarding to score a goal. It's just very, like, point and shoot or, you know, press one button. Um, but I do think, like, I think, yeah, from talking to people, I think people have... I think they've just accepted it that it's like, right, well, we're not going to have the option to play eFootball this season. Um, you know, we don't have to wait and see what creative mode is going to be like in October, November. We can just either, you know, fully invest our time into FIFA or Warzone or whatever game you want, Halo, whatever, um, and then come back to it in the spring. And I think that that's kind of quelled a lot of anger on social media. Like, I've never seen it as quite, it's like, you know, a wasteland yeah. under at the moment, like in terms of, you know, in, you know, even interactions that we have with guys that follow us, there's still guys reaching out to me and asking me my opinion and stuff, but for the foreseeable, like it is, it, it there's nothing really to discuss. Like, you know, there's nothing much to talk about apart from a couple of events that they add um, yeah. every week. And I think that that's something that, yeah, that's, I think that's going to be the worry for them is that like, I do think people will try it. I think that even people that say like I'm done, I'll never install the game again, they will try it because yeah. we will we will get on to talking about the patch that happened, the latest patch. Um because I've played a shit ton of the game since the since they updated it. And I actually think it's I think there's a lot of stuff to go into. But yeah, I think that that is probably the biggest worry is you know, is the casual kind of trial by social media as well as kind there that it's like oh that game is terrible i mean you know there's invisible players and it's like well that's kind of fixed but you know the that image yeah, stays the, with people the memory you know? the yeah memory the memory doesn't erase, the memory yeah. doesn't erase and, and i think I, I was gonna say just quickly a further a further point to it is that 
as much as I've just sat there and gone, yep, yeah, do you know what? It's out of control. <laughs> they were very much damned if they did and damned if they didn't mm. with, the, with the delay. Because, again, on one side of the fence, you could have somebody, for example, not saying he, he, this is his own opinion, but when Marlon was like, well, they've had two years, why why, why have I got another delay on top mm. of it? Or you'll have the other batch of people will go, do you know what? This game wasn't ready, so don't worry, I'm okay with waiting. Yeah. And, or they might see the rays of light that are there, which yeah. there are some. Yeah, there is, there but, is. But, but it's because of the, uh, as I use the analogy before we went on, on kind of recording, because the head, the head of the snake is going... Joe, you know what? Look at all these bugs. Look at all these bugs. Look at all these bugs. Look at all these glitches. The rest of the bodies go. Yeah, do you know what? You're absolutely right. Mm. Oh, this is awful. And it's like, well, actually, there there are a section of players out there who are actually enjoying what they're playing. Yeah. It's just you won't hear the positive. Yeah, you won't. You over won't. the top of the noise of the negative ones. Yep. And 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 you know, both both are are a right opinion to have because. Again, some I would say some people who are more positive about it are probably judging the game based on what zero point nine was, mm. not on what was teased way back. Yeah. If you yeah. judged it based on what was teased way back, there's no way that this game gets to here. And if it does, it's an absolute miracle that mm. it gets to there. Mm. But it's just not the game that was on the teaser trailer. Therefore, for me, I, 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 you could chuck whatever update you want at it, and it, it's not going to be anywhere close to it, in mm. my opinion. Yeah. But Marlon, I cut you off there, so please carry on. No, I was just going to <laughs> um, suck up to you and make an analogy that you like, and it's like <laughs> the idea that um, people will always remember the, the bad things about this initial release. It's basically like the boy at school who wets himself. It doesn't matter <laughs> how much he impresses or how much potential he fulfills afterwards, he'll always be known. As the yes. boy who wet himself. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I like that. I, I like, like that. that yeah. so that's the problem. It's it's society, and you know, generally they tend to absorb the more negative aspects of something. And I think in this case, especially with games, they're an easy target, and with anything that is, you know, um, somewhat popular or somewhat trying to be successful, we always want to we always want to tear it down. Mm. And this is one of those things where people see an opportunity, and you know, rather than looking at the things that it does well, because it's not an utterly, utterly, truly bad game. It's not. You know, I think that's been overseen by, overshadowed, sorry, by um, the glitches and the bugs. You know, there is still a good game underneath that, and I'm sure we'll get to that point mm. shortly. Um, so, yeah, somewhat my analogy, trying to get my <laughs> points from Wes. <laughs> Oh, I'm very much a fan of an analogy on this podcast, very much so. Yeah, but that is that is a good point, I think, because, yeah, it is, once you go down that road of losing the public's kind of support, like, it can very, very, very quickly change, you know? And it's, like, Halo is probably the best example. I'm a massive Halo fan, right? And, like, Halo have handled it in a way that, like, they had they were meant to have the game ready for launch, like, for the Xbox Series X, right? And they didn't, and there was no way they were going to have it ready they weren't happy with us and they delayed the game by, you know, a long time, over a year. And now you can see Halo's ready to launch. Like it actually launched a multiplayer beta kind of ty type thing today, um, which was like a surprise announcement. Um, but like, uh, I remember at the time, like I remember the amount of hate and I'm in a couple of forums and a couple of groups, like, cause I am a massive Halo fan. Um, the amount of hate like was was equal was equal to Pez. Like they were like, what are they doing for the last five six years? You know where they were meant to be. You know Halo Five was so shit and like blah 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 and all this. Um, and it was just like a you know a cesspool of hate. And if anyone's listening to this and you know that wasn't the case, uh, call me out on it. But that's what I saw from being just a, a Halo fan in different communities. And people were you know putting up memes of the graphics. They were like saying, oh you know this is a PS4 type game on an Xbox Series X and it's meant to be your flagship game and all this. But they took their time. They announced the, the delay. They said, look, it won't be coming out this year. It'll be coming out maybe next year towards the end of the year, blah, blah, blah. Um, and now I would say that I'm probably, I probably have more hype for Halo now than I did back a year ago, even though I was crushed that it wasn't going to be coming out. And I bought an Xbox Series X specifically to play Halo. And it was like, you know, 500 quid down the drain practically because obviously there was no games out at the time that i wanted to play apart from halo and that didn't come out so it was like i was crushed like and i was devastated but 
now I'm more hyped. So I do think that you can pull it back, but it just, you know, comparing Halo, obviously, to Pez is is, is two different things, um, you know, and how they've reacted to it and, you know, the manpower they have behind Halo and the millions and millions that they're spending on it. But I do think it's possible to come back, uh, like, from the debt, because I do think that there is a good game there. But I also think that, like, something that we've had throughout a team we've had throughout the podcast since i played the early version of the game like there's a lot to love if you want to love it and there's a lot to hate if you want to hate it this is going to be i think the most polarizing pez game we've had since pez maybe 15 i'd say because some loved 15 some didn't um but yeah i mean i don't know boys it's just it's hard because like speaking about the game, let's talk about the update because I know Marlon, you've probably played a bit of it. I'm not too sure how much of it you've played, Wes, um, but I've played a shit ton of it, and I can see certain ray rays of light in it. I can see a light at the end of the tunnel. But again, you are right, Wes, in what you've said is that like I'm judging it off point nine. You know what I mean? I'm judging it off point nine. I'm not. I'm not judging it off Pez 2021 in full flow when everything is working and you've got the manual passing and shooting and you've all these stuff like there's just so much fundamentally missing from eFootball that you can't compare them um but based on what it is if i was looking at this as a beta the current version that's up now since the update like i've i've had some really fun games i've had some really fair games i think that a lot of people playing it at the moment um you know, are probably having mixed with it because the responsiveness is still an issue. The collisions are still an issue. They're not 100% fixed yet. Um, but I think it's, I think it's way better than what released back in September 30th. So, you know, if people haven't tried it, um, I think it's worth dipping back in and seeing, but you know, it takes a little bit of time. I'm not going to tell you to, you need to relearn the game and it, you know, the game is only shit because you're shit, because I see a lot of that on Twitter. The game has its faults. Like there's a lot of a lot of bare uh, fundamental issues that are there that doesn't cover up you learning the game. You know what I mean? It's more, can you look past the bugs and have a, you know, an enjoyable football game with eFootball? And I don't know how you feel about that, Marlon, but that's kind of where I'm at with it now from talking to people that are nearly afraid to put up on Twitter. Like, you know, oh, look at this goal I scored. Look at this move, you know, and it's the, the clip is just ripped apart for, you know, bad AI or terrible responsiveness. And it's like, yeah, yeah, but it, you know, it felt better than what it looks like um but what are you what are you what are you thinking marlon with the with the update um yeah i think it shows potential i think like you were saying just a moment ago um people don't want to accept that there is um some potential there Mm. it's a trend to hate on it and dump on it before you've even really given it a chance um I actually didn't have much of a problem with the initial release. I know that's probably a controversial statement. And, you know, don't get me wrong, I did play more than 20 matches on the original build. Mm. And I also quite enjoyed the new football game Test. You know, the (laughs) the obscurely named, it's Pez but it's not Pez, Mm. new football game Test that came out (laughs) over the summer. Um, And it just felt fresh. It did feel like a, a breath of fresh air. And... It's probably easy to say that when we've had basically the same game for the last two years, because I know mm. semantically 2020 and 2021 are different games, but they're not. I mean, we have to be honest, they are basically the same game spiritually. Yep. So we've had that for two years. So anything that comes along and changes things up, I think it's fresh and exciting at first. And I didn't initially have too much of a problem with it. You can understand that, okay, this is unfinished. Give it time. Um, Post patch, Um, I think it smoothed out a lot of the niggles and the bugs that were there initially. And I think one of the main problems was some of the the collision errors as well that Mm. really, um, they were just frenetic and um, they were cantankerous in the way that the game played in the sense that you couldn't even do um, what you envisioned to do on the pitch because there'd be some clipping issue or there'd be some unresponsiveness or a player couldn't figure out where the ball was and it did disrupt the experience. So I think... Getting that hurdle out of the way, I think they've done well on this first patch. And that's one hurdle out of the way. That's one um, battle won. There's many more down the road. Um, and time will tell. But you can imagine, had they released this patch as the very first public mm. build of eFootball, yeah. you know, how badly, how badly would the public perception be? Mm. I think it would Who be knows? a lot better. Still a yeah. lot of work to do. But yeah, I definitely think that like, 
I, I mean, people will probably be listening to this. I know they will be, and it, and they're they're right to as well because I like people calling us out. I like people questioning, you know, like why we say the things we say. But genuinely, I understand if people are saying thinking like, how can you say that the bill at the moment is even, you know, ten percent better or five percent better? I mean, I think it's very, it's a very, it's a very difficult one. I think it's very polarizing because I, I can see certain like things that are happening in e-football e that are like if they you know if they were happening in pez 14 or 15 like five or six years ago or seven years ago i'd be questioning like you know like what the hell's going on they're that bad you know they're that kind of so old-fashioned in the way things work but then there's also some stuff there that's like you know such a breath of fresh air as you said marlon that it's like Man, this would be sick if, you know, they just did more of this stuff and less of this, you know, this stupid stuff or the silly stuff or they tighten up this or loosen this or whatever. And I just think that people are kind of taking everything, the good with the bad, and they're just putting it into one, like, you know, box and saying, you know, like, this is just shit. Like, it's just there's no redeeming qualities about this game whatsoever. It's dead. It's a write off. And I, you know, I just... Personally, for me, I disagree. Like, I think that there is, I think there is hope there, but I still think that even if this game, when I talk about hope, I talk about hope for a game that I will probably enjoy. I don't think that there will be people, or I think there will be people out there that will never enjoy eFootball because it's so, like, polarizing. And I don't think that they've kind of, like, stayed with the Pez essence of, you know, I mean, even talking about as a Pez game, you know, the, the, like in the bill at the moment, there's very little player ID. You know, there's no tactics pretty, pretty much. Secondary press is gone. Off the ball movement is gone. Like stuff that have been fundamental to Pez. They're, they're not there. So it's very hard to judge it as a Pez game. And I think that that's what people are saying. Like, you know, they're not open to trying it. And then when they do try it, technically the game is just so far away from where it should be that they have every reason to just dump on it and you've no defense and i think that's what me and you were talking about before wes is that like it's kind of like going in to see you know like a movie and we used the snyder cut as a as an example before where it was like you know justice league came out you know apologies if nobody's a a, a dc or a marvel comic book hero uh movie gore or enjoyer but like when the snyder cut came out like i thought it was brilliant like it was like four hours or whatever and it just like completely annihilated the Justice League for a better movie. But there are some people out there that just did not like the Snyder Cut. You know, thought it was just like complete waffle and four hours of crap and whatever. So I do think it's always going to be polarizing no matter what it is. Because I think fundamentally the actual like essence of it is not for the people that are not enjoying it. And that's okay as well. It's just that... Yeah, I mean, me and you have talked about it, Wes, off, off podcast, on the podcast, like we've talked, obviously you're in the camp of this isn't for me at the moment. And, you know, me and you still, you know, we're, we haven't fallen out. We're still able to respect each other's opinions without Bang. agreeing with each other's just opinions. About. Yeah, just about, <laughs> you know, but um, I mean, like, like from your perspective with that, because you are kind of, you know, not against me and Marilyn here for lack of a better word, but like you're on the other side of the camp where you're like, nah this is this is bad like this is you know i'm just like no i've no interest like like wh where 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 do you think that energy comes from from people that are not like interested in seeing or even exploring some of the the, po the positives in the gameplay like that that are there i think i think i mean from from my perspective it, it the, the 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 real disconnect has come from the the communication the delivery the marketing and and all of that in one not to mention then as you've mentioned the amount of changes you've made to a game mm. which granted change can be a very good thing like i'm okay with things getting changed because you know you hear it throughout gaming circles across the land where people go oh do you know what i wish i wish nba did this or i wish fifa did this or i wish call of duty did this or mm. and, and and then when change happens they go no 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 i didn't mean that i meant i meant this and it's yeah. like Okay, so you ask for change, you get change, and then you then are angry with change. What I think the difference maker here is, is had the messaging been perfect, had the delivery have been perfect, and had the the kind of the, the communication have been perfect, the changes would have been a lot easier to stomach. Mm. Had had this game come out and it would have been fully functioning, no or very little bugs, 
doesn't become the meme in this parallel universe, you know, that we we could potentially live in. <laughs> if all of that came together correctly, the changes would be a lot easier to make because some people would then sit there and go, "Oh, do you know what? The game's actually good. You just need to learn how to 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 get on with it." Mm. For example, we talked uh, about the PES twenty eighteen beta and about the fact that you know that people didn't quite get the fact that the game, the, the defending mechanic had changed, and then everyone cried foul about going, "Oh, defending's oh, defending's too difficult," mm. and it's like, "Oh, okay, we'll just change it back to how it was," and then people go, "Oh no, defending's just too easy. You can just hold square." Or, or or X or whatever your preference is on your mm. console. I I think I think it that's where that comes from. It's it's almost that domino effect of it started when the online performance test started, and then it's just it's just gone on. It's basically someone's just kicked the snowball down the hill, and it's just an avalanche now. Mm-hmm. Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to the people who have disconnected from from the community or from the game series itself. It doesn't matter what message comes out now. It doesn't matter what upgrade comes out. It doesn't matter what update comes out. At the end of the day, they're not bothered anymore because the way that this world works mm, now is people yeah. just move on. People have got Warzone to go to. People have got the new Battlefield to go to. People have got you know any myriad of games, Football Manager, FIFA, all of those games, Halo. You know the, All of these games that people can now turn to, it doesn't matter about the free one that's come out that's become the meme because... It was the meme for about two weeks, mm. and now people just don't care now mm. because the meme was old. The meme is now old news. It didn't, yeah. you know, it's it's not brand new. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. it was fashionable at the time to go look at Ronaldo's face, look at Messi's face, mm. and there's still people clinging on to that on social media, which is fine. But it's not the in thing now. It's not like oh look at this and it'll get loads of likes and loads of retweets. It literally doesn't matter anymore, mm. and and that's sad. Realistically, mm. it's sad for the game series that. We've got to this stage where it doesn't matter anymore. To the Pez fans that are out there, I, I, I hope that it recovers. I do hope it does. And I want that to be a very central part of this because ultimately that will push competition to be better because you've got goals and you've got UFL, which are completely unknown entities at this point, my I add. People are bowing down at the altars of goals and UFL. They've literally shown nothing and people are getting hyped about Bobby Firmino face scans that look worse <laughs> than the ones that Pez has got. Like, please don't don't bow down at the altars until you've seen gameplay. That that really should be the takeaway from all of this. Until you see gameplay footage of in game, you just don't get hyped because there's no point. Until you see visibly what is the game, just get rid of your cinematic trailers, get rid of all of that stuff, and literally focus on the gameplay. Mm. But it's sad that we've got to this level, and I think that's like I said to answer that question. I think that's where it comes from. That's the epicenter, and these are the after effects. Yeah, that's where we're at. Yeah, no, you're right. I, I think it is. Yeah, it's, it's. I think it, that's perfectly summed up because it's, it's gone beyond what you're actually playing when you're sitting there now with your controller. Like it's, it's the whole lot has been lumped in together. You know, the marketing. You know, the, the delays. Like, you know, I've been. To, I was talking to a couple of my in real life friends that are like, they wouldn't be. You know, tuned in. They wouldn't have a Twitter account. You know, they very casual gamers and they'd be like oh when's the new pez out and it's like oh well it's not called pez it's called e-football now oh yeah when's it out oh like next year Do you know they can't understand like like why it is the way it is at the moment and you know why there's no modes and you know like it, they just they just see it as like oh it's just a beta or it's just a, a demo so there's no point in even investing time into it yeah. um you know and these would be very casual guys you know so they just move on to the next thing very quickly they have no allegiance or they've no you know passion or they've no you know friendships built up in the world of pez so it's very easy for them to just delete it put on a different game and 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 play their two hours a week or whenever they can get a break from the kids or whatever so yeah i mean it is it is just a pity because you know as i said earlier like i think it's 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 gone very quiet like i think even people that are kind of you know, people are just even tired of complaining about it and picking it apart. They're just like, oh, I just couldn't be arsed. I'm going on to play FIFA. I'm going on to play Warzone it's, it's or whatever. Wasted, it's wasted yeah. energy. It's like, who has the time nowadays to jump on and really kind of keep kicking it, kicking something while it's down? Yeah. Like who who has that vested energy to be like, oh, do you know what? I'm going to have the play eFootball account. Oh, like, I'm going to have notifications on for when they tweet. So I can go in and just... <laughs> and, yeah, well, there and is some of them out there. And, repeat, and repeatedly kick them. Like, who has the energy? Like, I'm 31 years old. You'd be surprised. Old. You'd be surprised, I know, yeah. I, I, I'm <laughs> surprised I see all the time, man. It's the when that, when that patch came out, it wasn't like, 
new patches out. Let's hope it's good. It was, um, you know, if you go into YouTube and see all these people streaming the game or Twitch and you see people streaming the game, the titles would be new patches out. Let's see how funny this is going to be. Mm. New patches out. Let's see yeah, how bad yeah, it's going to yeah. be. It wasn't, let's hope it's good. You know, I yeah. hope this is worth my time. It was the negative connotations. Yeah. yeah. And you'll be surprised. There's people that literally their identity is shitting on something. Mm. It doesn't matter whether it's PES, it doesn't matter whether it's FIFA or GTA or um, something that um, a celebrity has done. That's just the way it's, society is nowadays. It's just slam. It's just they can't wait for something to fail. It's, it's like being part of the slam dunk contest for the NBA. It's just like they're just like giving up, going right. Who can get the hottest take? Yeah. Woof! And just like it's just like oh come on, like seriously, this is what we're descending into. Mm. Like I get it. I get, I, and, and, and this goes back to the same reason why I say, like, I'm not happy with the direction the game's gone in, but I understand why, because if you've got a, you know, as they tend to celebrate, a, a bazillion downloads of a, yeah, of a mobile, mobile, you're going you're gonna to steer towards the market that has the most people in it because it's going to make you the most, the most revenue. Mm. Like, so I get it. It's not, it, I don't like it, and I still don't like it because it has essentially knackered up the game for console users mm. because so so for me it's kind of like as as baz alluded to the fact that tactics are stripped back the fact that you know some of the the fundamental gameplay bits uh teammate press and and triggering manual runs and uh, you're kind of almost taking a little bit of the skill out of it and you're just kind of basically going well we're gonna go back to two button where you press x to pass and, mm. and square to shoot and it's like this isn't the early 90s this isn't a snes this is a ps5 and an Xbox Series S and a Series X, like you're not in the realm where you know my dad's holding a, a joystick and has got one red button. He's trying mm. to shoot down Space Invaders. <laughs> you're in the world of 2021. It's very fast paced, very fast moving, and you have to catch people's attention very quickly. Mm. And this caught the attention for all the wrong reasons. And as Marlon pointed out, first impression is just going to last. Mm. And you know, as you've said about your IRL friend. I put it across to mine, and they went, "What in God's name is this?" And I'm like, yeah, "Well, that's that's what they've that's what they've served up." Yeah, it's a hard it's a hard one to explain to people that aren't like up with it, you know, and keeping up to date. It's like if we were to go to any other community, I suppose, and you know, like I'm sure there'll be guys playing Halo there now. So when I go on, you know, tonight or tomorrow, you'll be like, "Oh, I'm having I'll a wonderful like, time." They'll be like, "No, you see all these bugs." Yeah, this is this bugs? is the worst Halo oh, ever, and I'm just <laughs> yeah, I'm just sitting here like happy out, like you know, sixteen year old me. So. Yeah, no, I mean, it is... it's just like, it's an OP gun, you can't use that, <laughs> it's not fair. Yeah, <laughs> but that's just the way it's gone, man. And I do, no, like, I, I, th- I think I think why I kind of enjoy the podcast so much is because I used to get involved before over Twitter or in forums, maybe not forums so much, but I used to get involved with people going back and forth with them where it's like, you know, it's very, it's very hard to get your point across when it's like a one-way conversation while you wait for somebody else to come back with a one-way conversation, whether it's a forum, whether it's, you know, Discord, whether it's text, even if it's real time, even if it's, you know, a real time chat, even by text, I think getting on a podcast and giving our thoughts on it, like, I don't think I've ever said that I'm happy with the current state of eFootball, but a majority of people that don't listen to this podcast would say, that I ha- that I am, you know what I mean? That I just, you know, like take whatever comes my way and say it's the best thing ever. You know what I mean? And that's that's fair enough as well because at the end of the day, I am a Pez fan and I have been and I've mentioned it plenty of times before. It's not just about the game that comes out every year. It's like it's about being part of the community, you know, making friends out of it, like all this sort of stuff that you like dedicate your time to doing. Um and I just think that when people don't have those ties, it's easy to to discount why you're doing what you're doing and why you're spending time doing podcasts and stuff like that because they're not invested in it. Even if they're listening to this podcast, like the guys listening to this podcast, I think they're probably split down the middle. Some are probably enjoying it, some aren't enjoying it. And that's okay. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, 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 there's, I don't think anyone, I haven't seen anyone come out and say that this is the best Pez game ever. If you're not enjoying it, you don't know what a good football game is because there's so much like that needs work that I don't think you could claim that. But I think that that is a far cry from saying that like, you know, I scored a goal the other day. I might have sent it to you, Wes, or I sent it to a few people. I scored a goal the other day and it like yeah there was a couple of things wrong with the actual ai and stuff from the defend and the guy i was playing 
probably didn't really know how to defend. It was probably his first game and I probably made him cry. But like, I just made, I, I did a move, like I scored a goal and it was like every single thing I wanted to do in that, in that split second, it was just so intuitive, you know, the back heel, the positioning, you know, when to shoot, when to pass. And I was like, fuck, this was actually, this was really, really nice. And then, you know, the next game, like, I think I scored two on goals or something. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, this is, yeah, this but, is not good, we, you know? We, we've said that, we've said that before. And I'm sure, sure Marlon, obviously with the, the, the series and, and the retrospectives that he's, he's done on, on the Pez series, will probably agree with this, is that when any of these Pez titles comes together and it works, like, perfectly. Yeah. And by that, I mean, as in, you do you put in what you want the game does it and it looks brilliant yeah yeah you can point to it and go do you know what that's fantastic like that's so good and it's those fleeting moments where you guys are looking at it and and to a lesser degree me when i've played it i've seen some moments where i go do you know what there is something still there mm. it's just it takes a while to get your head around yeah it's fact hidden that it's in there somewhere <clears throat> and it's like that's that's the that's what i think Pez fans hold on to mm. is there are those moments where when that game rolls together it all comes together it can be the best football game there is out there because when it plays as a you know you play offline for example I was playing Master League towards the tail end of uh, Pez 2021 absolutely loved it hadn't mm. played a Master League in years but I absolutely loved it and it was like the only reason I stopped playing it was because I upgraded console and I forgot to transfer my data over but that's another story for another <laughs> um but that that's the that was the difference maker i went oh do you know what let me forget where online is let me forget where my club is and all these players that grow and all this other stuff let me just have a look at how this game plays natively put it in stadium camera looks the business mm. playing at stad louis and do you know what so good mm. it felt brilliant mm. and it was just like it was something completely different and i think if it gets half the chance to get there there's every confidence that this will get there it's about how long you are, as I keep saying before, it's how long you're prepared to wait to get there. And more importantly, has it still got the steam that it had when it was getting released yearly that it has to recapture the attention? Yeah, well, and that's going to be I'm, that's going to be a big thing because people are going to be people are going to be. I hold on, my. <laughs> My cooking's either spilling onto the cooker. You're all right, man. You're all right. You're all right. <laughs> this is live, folks. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing, though, Wes. Like, that's a great point because when you when you strip it back, it's okay that the game isn't for you. You know what I mean? That's that's the thing I would always go back to is that, like, there's games out there, right, that are, you know, absolutely brilliant games, like God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, or whoever, you know. Like, I haven't played them. Do you know what I mean? And it's not for that I think that they're shit or I, you know, have a bad feeling towards them. It's just, you know, I haven't had the time to commit to them. You know, I've chosen to play Warzone more than I probably should have. That's probably healthy. Like, you know what I mean? It's like with FIFA. I played FIFA. I've tried FIFA. FIFA's very fun this year. It's probably the most fun I've been having. But I haven't sat down and played a FIFA since probably 17, I'd say, apart from a bit of Volta last year. So for me, everything I'm seeing in FIFA this season is new for the last four yeah, years. Do you know what I mean? Be so it's yeah, fresh. Like it's, everything's brand new to me. Like the animations, like everything. I was like, I'm not seeing any of the bugbears that people have with, with FIFA because I, you know, it's fresh to me. And I think that's the thing is that like, I think it's okay not to enjoy eFootball because there is a lot wrong with it. But I do think that there is, you know, and I keep going back to saying this, I do think that those that are willing to wait, like that's a, that's their decision to make, you know. Um, yeah, and I think I think I think from I think from 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 a, a, a I would say a jaded fan's perspective, and, and I think Marlon touched on this a little bit when he <coughs> we we made the we make the distinction that that twenty and twenty one pretty much the same, bar a couple of animations, bar a lick of paint in the menus, and and, and the 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 very aesthetic changes that there were. The fan base is just fatigued. Mm. It's got to a point with a fan base where they are just tired. They're tired of having the same gaming experience. They're tired of having the same delivery of the game. They're tired of it. And then to then for them for, for Konami to come out and be like, oh, do you know what? We're taking a, a year out to give you the best possible experience and we're looking for photorealism and all the rest of it. 
for it to then deliver in the way that it has, for it to be stripped back in the way that it has, and for the, again, for lack of a better term, for the mobile look of the game mm. to be as prevalent and as, as kind of in the forefront as it is, everyone's just like, well, what have you done? Mm. What have you done to it? Because this, you know, you've you've given us the hype of, ah, oh, do you know what? There's going to be all of this brilliant stuff that there's going to be. And then instead, it's it's more of a stripped back experience than it was when it was just solely a console game, which I think, yeah. again, you look at it, and not that this is a jab at mobile players, and it's not mobile players' fault, and I'm not, that's not what I'm saying, but it's that linkage of the two. Had mm. it have been, here's our PES mobile, and here's our console game, would have been, I think we would have been fine. Mm. I think the fact that they have tried to merge the two together, regardless of what way you think they have, the, the ability to try and merge the two together is really what's knackered them up here. Yeah. Well, it was massive. It was massively ambitious when they announced it. Like, I, I think that's, I think that's a big thing as well is that like people don't realize what they're trying to do in terms of, you know, the mobile is so big, but they also didn't want to turn their back on console players either, you know? And I think that they might've just, if they, if they were, if they were kind of doing it now, I think that they probably would have given themselves one more year and said, listen, let's have this with the Unreal Engine 5. You know, obviously, if, in an ideal world, that would be where it would be. Because I think I think the big thing missing from when they announced the Messi trailer and they showcased, showcased Messi with the photorealistic uh, graphics and stuff, I think that they were trying to do something of, you know, without the information on screen or without the information ever coming out, I think they were trying to show that it's like, okay, here's phase one, where the game is going to look like this, play like this, and this is the features, and then this is phase two, and then Messi's trail, the Messi photorealistic graphics might have been in phase three, which would be like, you know, September 2022, maybe, when Unreal would be in, and there'd be all the bugs tweaked out and stuff. I think when people saw the Messi trailer, they were like, oh, this is what's launching next season, day one. Brilliant. No, but that, but that's yeah, but that, yeah, but that's what they should have, they should, they were right to, we were right to think yeah, that, 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 like, you know. And, and, but, it, but it goes back to that word, it goes back to expectation. Mm. If Konami don't set the bar up here, then the community doesn't think, oh, we're getting this type of game. If they come in and go, right, we are, we're from the ground up, we're trying to figure this out, we're trying to go forward. I think everybody would have been, all right, a little bit miffed because they'd yeah. be like, oh, well, do you know what, actually, what are we, you know, what are we doing? But at least you would have had the nous and the responsibility of going, okay, well, here's where we've set the bar. If we go beyond that, yeah. you're going to have fan bases come out and go, holy shit, yeah. this is brilliant. Well, it's like now, man. Know. It's like now because people have accepted now, like begrudgingly, and they're like a bit miffed about it, but they've accepted that we're not going to see the next major update for eFootball yeah. until next spring. Konami could come out in February. I'm not saying that they could, but Konami could come out in February and say, listen, we're ahead of schedule. We're putting my club into beta mode. These are the new graphics. We've added this back. We've added this back. And it's like, whoa, this is a whole new different game, you know? So... I'm not saying that they will, like, but I'm just saying that, like, just, set the bar a bit yeah. realistic rather than, I you know. The, um, I think the other thing is, is that the industry has changed so much over the last 10 years, let alone the last 20, in the sense mm. that once upon a time, it used to be that you left the developers alone and they would make the game and it would be announced that they were making something and it would come out. And there wasn't any of this sort of feedback back and forth. You know, there wasn't this communication that we have now. The thing is now is um, the psychology of the whole industry has changed because it is basically um, marketing, marketing, social media, the, the impressions first. But first and foremost, we want to be relevant. We want to be trending. We want to get um, the, the stock up. So they will release the cosmetic stuff first. Look how it looks. Mm. Look at uh, Firmino's face, where's that? You know, yeah. <laughs> um, Shevchenko, look at this. Yeah, look at Zinchenko. Like, well, yeah, yeah, but we haven't seen any gameplay footage. Mm. Yeah, but look at Shevchenko. You know, he's working. Yeah, look at look at his he's face. It's so cool. It's like yeah, let, show 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 me his facial expression. Show me show me his mouth moving. Mm. Come on, <laughs> show me. It's like, come on. The, the, they want to put the bare minimum out, and they expect all this adoration, and they want to respect all of this, you know, mm -hmm. euphoria that like someone has come down. Um, you know, from outer space and gave us this gift from the future. Um, <laughs> rather than turning around and saying, look guys, here's what we've been working on, you know, versus gameplay, which is the most important thing. You know, is this something that would be relevant to your interests? They're not doing that. It's just simply, 
look who's working with us. Look who's endorsing us. You know, mm. we're we're in the gang now. Yeah. Um, and too many people are doing this. It's not just um, the football guys. It was the UFL guys. Um, I think maybe another um, football developer is doing the same sort of thing. Um, there was a wrestling game developer. Um, I think called the Wrestling Code. We're making. Um, no, Virtual Basement, sorry, making a game called The Wrestling Code. It was showing off the wrestlers, but not showing you any actual match gameplay. How would mm. the game look in motion? That's the most that ES, ESCB boxing game as well. I mean, granted, they, yeah. they, they have shown gameplay, but I think, again, it's getting scrutinised to go, ah, it doesn't look quite right. You maybe need to go back to the drawing board, but mm. at least they are going with the here's our list of roster, here's all of here's our work in progress. And, here's our, and here is, yeah, it says yeah. quite rightly underneath it going, this footage is alpha or whatever it is, it's a work in progress, it's just a representation of what it might look like. And and again, we, we talk about it at length, if that had been the delivery method of what we had seen from eFootball, then again, I think it would have been, it, yes, it would have still caught some heat, but not the amount that it did. Yeah. Uh, you know, but again, some of their own own goals, leaving markers in the in the the the, the pre like the video where they do like, oh, here's our deep dive video of seven minutes, and then they've got like, oh, well, there's pieces of the software that we use to capture the footage that's still kept in the actual official video. And you're just like, you know, the you know the infamous linesman in the middle of the center circle, like like these things were left in, and and again, as while I'm pointing out the, the top of this, hopefully to rant this out a little bit. It was literally just a case of who who decided that that was a good idea. Mm. Who decided to show a, a linesman running full pelt in the centre circle with a flag in his hand? <laughs> like, at no point should that have even crossed anybody's brain that that okay, so that's a somebody thing. somebody important somewhere had to have signed off on that. You mm. know, but somebody should have said accept not... all on on the day. Yeah. That's what they've done. Well, that they was a screenshot, wasn't it? That, the linesman yeah. was a screenshot or something, it's a wasn't it? Screen- yeah, pre release yeah. screenshot on the official website. Yeah, yeah. And well, the video, yeah. The video, it's trailer, just been, like, it's just as you said, Wes, it's like a snowball effect of like one bad thing. And we've seen it happen with GTA as well now at the moment, where it's like, you know, I've seen like some of the stuff I've seen at GTA. I haven't, I haven't even, I haven't even had time to play it yet. Um, and I'm kind of in a situation where. It's like with Cyberpunk. I bought Cyberpunk day one. It's still in the wrapping below because I was waiting for him to fix all the bugs. And it's still, in, it's literally, I never even took it out. Probably should have got a refund, but, you know, I, I wanted to see what it would be like eventually. But I do think that that is, that, it, that is something that, like, people nowadays, I think they're getting, they're getting smarter to it. You know, there's a lot more content we're consuming. And if something doesn't grab your attention you know, it's, you're not going to have an interest in it. Like, unless you're a diehard or unless you're a purist, like it's, it's not like, you know, I think, I I don't know who was it that gave the example before, but like for Pez, for a lot of people that play it, Pez is like, you know, doing up like a classic car or something, you know, there's no, there's no method of it. Like it's just pure madness doing it. You could go off and buy a brand new car. You're paying for parts that are 40 years old like paying us, you know, massive prices just to like spruce up something that's, you know, gone past its best days. But there is yeah. car enthusiasts out there that are like, oh no, but you know, this is when cars were at their best and I've always wanted to do this and whatever. And I think it's like, that's like with Pez as well, is that like we put all this time and energy into doing it and some people don't understand why. But then yeah. at the same time, you have to kind of have it in a way that like, I think people are like, you know, like the, the marketing guys, you know, are getting clever to, to to that now as well. Like we're getting less and less and less time to consume content because if you scroll through Twitter now or any time, you're probably going to see about 10 things that are fighting for your attention, whether it's a new song or a new movie or, you know, there's trailers for trailers, there's trailers within trailers. I mean, there's a, there's an event for the new Spider-Man movie coming out where they're doing like a, they're showing the trailer in theaters like the trailer of the movie. Now I'm looking forward to Spider-Man, but I'm just saying that like, it's just, <laughs> cra- so it's crazy. Experience. You know what I mean? At that, at that, that it's gone to that stage that people are fighting for tickets to go to see a trailer for a movie that's going to be on the internet within 10 seconds after they see it. Um, you know, so I don't know. It's just, I think they are. I think that's why they've gone to those lengths of trying to get your eyeballs on this. And I think that, yeah, I think you just have to, you just have to accept that now that that's part and parcel of the marketing. You know that it's it's, yeah, it it's is, not um, going to get better. Like it is cutthroat, and the whole industry has changed now. Where 
if we look in the bubble of um, Pez and FIFA, that Konami aren't just competing with EA anymore. They are competing with Call of Duty. They're competing with Fortnite. Yeah. They're competing with everyone else for their money. You know, they're competing with everyone for their hard-earned buck. Um, so they probably couldn't care less about what EA is doing and vice versa. Um, but the problem is, I think, at the same time, that probably has been a correlation in why eFootball is in the state it's in now because it's rushing to get in there and compete in that market space before yeah. you get left behind and people's attention turns to something else. Mm. You know, I don't think this scorn will last forever. I think that there is a chance that in five years, you know, they could win us all back and this will blow over. Um, I mean, we, I remember you mentioned earlier in the show about you bought um, an Xbox Series X for the new Halo and then was disappointed. And yeah. it reminded me of when I was younger and I went out and I bought um, a 360 for Pair 6. I thought, oh my God, Pair 6 on a next gen console will be the Holy Grail. <laughs> and that was when we had less pre release uh, media to consume to warn us, even. Yeah. Bought it and I was like, well, what's this? There's less than there was on Pair 5. Maybe it's no edit mode. I couldn't even change any players' names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and everything was so, it was such a regression. And I thought, this is it, we're doomed. Mm. But it, was, it took time, but they did rescind some of that quality. And um, maybe on that generation, it took a lot longer than it did on the PS4 generation. But um, it can be done. They've mm. shown that it can be done in the past. And there is every chance that in five years' time, we won't even be talking about this anymore. Maybe as an anecdote, maybe we'll be laughing about it going, hey, you remember mm. when, you know, um, players were running like Naruto characters and, <laughs> you know. Do you remember, when, do you remember, when, do you remember when players got several dislocations at once yes. and then they all got back <laughs> into place at the same time? Self-healing. Yeah. yeah. No, but it's like how we look back on PES 14 now. Like PES 14 is kind of, you're like, oh yeah, that old guy, you know, he you was a Colo crazy Torre? guy. You remember know, Colo Torre? You know, Colo Torre's face in Liverpool. Yeah. It's like, you know, you, you do think back of them with, you know, there's some people now saying that Pez 21 is the best Pez game ever. And, you know, they're, they're, they're going with that. And it's like, well, where was this energy last season when all the complaints were just about, you know, the iconic moments, you know, which like were justified criticism. But now the gameplay is in such a state that Pez 2021 is, you know, like an amazing Pez experience, especially with mods and especially with, you know, editing and all that. Um, so I do think, yeah, I do think Marin, I do agree with you. It's just, it's just going to be a hard, it's just going to be a hard battle now. You know, it's, it's, or a hard war, I think, you know, like there's a lot more things to come. I think that is going to be, it's going to be tough. You know, it's going to be a long road to recovery. That's, that's what it's going to be like. Um, and I do, you know, hopefully that they come out on the, 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 the good side of it, because I do think people will try it. I mean, all you need is to, you know, drop a couple of, of good bits of content. Um, I mean, even this week, we've seen them do a couple of campaigns where it's like, you know, score seven goals and, you know, five games and you get this a reward or whatever. So I do think once they get a stable build of the game, then they can start concentrating on the content. Um, you know, but look, lads, time will tell. I mean, time will tell. Uh, it's been a great conversation as usual. I'm going to have to end it there because... Uh, yeah, we're gone over the hour mark, so hopefully it's been a good uh, discussion uh, for you guys that are, that are listening to listen to. So um, my thanks again to Weza and to Marlon uh, for coming on to the, the show tonight. Not too sure when this will go live. We'll probably try and get it up maybe tomorrow, which is the 16th. So um, yeah, we will have it up on the usual places. Um, and yeah, boys, I mean, unless you have anything else to say. I'm going to be going to be out of here, but uh, Marlon, thanks for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. You taking the time and uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, man. We'll do it again sometime. I'll call you. Don't call me. <laughs> but uh, no, it's been a great chat, obviously, to get, you know, unique takes as well. Um, you know, so a lot of people have been asking me to get you on. So I'm glad that you could uh, you could make it. And Wes, it's good to have you back, my bro. It's not the same without you. And yeah. Uh, yeah, hopefully. But well, let's see what the comments say about that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I want people in back. the comments to give Wes a load of shit. And we enjoyed this back. Why have you not here? Yeah. No, no, no. Just give Wes a load of shit. He loves, he loves that. He loves the drama. So. All right, boys. We'll end it there. I'll let the lads say the good looks. And uh, we will hopefully see you uh, soon. Bye.